Hello my fellow lifeworms, I'm back, and it has been a very long time. Main reason why it's taking me so long is just because I've been so consumed with work and school and stuff like that, that I, you know, I just haven't really made a vlog. So here we go, here's my vlog. In my previous video, I showed off our new snake, which was Cleo. You know, she's a nice, cool, pretty ball python. Unfortunately, she died. Uh, we don't know what was exactly wrong with her, but from the get-go, she was she just constantly had these problems and like these issues and she eventually died. Come to find out, it was most likely the reptile breeder's fault. Apparently this place is not reliable at all. They give them a crappy service, and I don't know what it was, but she didn't last very long, and she ended up dying. But we're trying again. We have a new snake now, and her name is Jade. We got her from a local pet store. She's kicking nice and healthy. She is probably I'd say about 20 inches now. Kind of hard to tell though, because it's, it's kind of hard to stretch her out really like to her exact length and you know get it right. But when she lays across a 18 inch ruler, she just sticks over just a little bit. So I'm just gonna say 20 inches. We've had her for a few months now and uh, she's kicking, she's awesome. Eating food the way snakes are supposed to, you know, wrapping around them and stuff. It's actually really cool to watch. Yeah, get the people. Get the paper! So yeah, new snake, yay, she's healthy, she's good, great, can't wait to see her get to be like 17 feet long. That's impossible though, they, go, they can only really grow up to like, at the most, five I'd say, but you know, I'm probably gonna expect a three to four foot snake. But I'm okay with that, that's totally okay. I like, I like uh, intimidating but not dangerous if you know what I mean. I do have some good news about what's going on right now. My cousin and two other friends and I, we are starting our own production studio and it's called Obelisk Productions. This is our logo. You got the O and the P and the obelisk in the center type of thing. But yeah, we, we thought it was clever. Uh, my idea, but uh, Jordan's put it together, made it reality. We plan on being a production studio that builds their own props, films their own movies, and can also commission out to people. And some of the example of our work is right here. This character is named the Red Hood. Now, if you don't know who the Red Hood is, Red Hood is a Batman character. I mean, I guess hero slash villain. He's like in the center, kind of like Catwoman type of thing. Who he is, he is one of Batman's Robins that was killed by the Joker, brought back to life by Ra's al Ghul, and then became the Red Hood because, you know, he didn't like how Batman was handling things. So he kind of wanted to, you know, do what Batman wasn't doing. And, you know, it's just, it was chaos. He's this vigilante dude that wears this awesome helmet that's red, whatever. And you know, he's got the vest and the armor and stuff. Anyway, we're building a version of him. The helmet we're doing is from Red Hood and the Outlaws. I think it's volume number one, something number one. But anyway, in this, in this volume, uh, his helmet is all cracked and broken. And you can see through and see like his distorted face. I have not personally read the comic book though. We kind of just were looking online at cool pictures and stuff of the character and that's when we saw and we decided that we were going to build that one. Jordan, he's the one that made this helmet. I helped cast his head to make the helmet. When everything is said and done, he's the one that sculpted it and painted it to make it look like what it does now and it looks awesome. I Ooh, that's one example of our work. Another example is this. Now, at first glance, you guys might think that this thing, you know, what is it? Kind of looks like a boot on a stick, a really spiky boot on a stick. No, it's not a boot on the stick. It's from the executioner from Resident Evil. We are building his axe. Now, this axe is to scale the size of the dude carrying it, and that's Tyler. If my cousin Tyler would is the size of this dude, this is how big the axe would be. We measured it, we measured like you wouldn't believe. Measured every bit of it. It's big, it's heavy, it took forever. We're getting ready to go on a painting job to make this thing look real and awesome, I can't wait. How we weighed it was, I got on a scale and you know weighed me and then weighed me holding it. I can't remember the exact number, but I think it was something around like 30 or 40 pounds. Now that doesn't sound very heavy, but when you have that much weight on the end of a pole, three feet out, it's pretty freaking heavy. It's really hard to swing sideways because there's so much weight in the back hammer part of it. It's just like what I was originally planning on doing. I was planning to do a demented scarecrow. Now here's a small sketch of what I was thinking we would do. In this sketch, you can kind of you can obviously see that the arms are long. You know, it's it's a much larger creature. And the idea was we were going to put me on stilts, and we modified some crutches that could go and wrap around my arms 
that I could lean over and, you know, walk basically on, almost on all fours. But the thing that caught us was on the actual mask that we were going to build. We we're going to build this demented scarecrow mask, like with the teeth and stuff that look really gnarly. But we wanted the jaw to open. And not only that, but when the jaw opened, it snarled. Like it gave like a snarling look. I put together this great idea on, on, on how to do it. The only issue is we ran out of time. Halloween's coming up too fast, and unfortunately, we don't got enough time to do it. So instead, we're falling to a backup plan, and I'm going as... I'm doing Darth Maul. One reason is because, you know, it's it doesn't take nearly as much to build Darth Maul. I already have a dual-ended lightsaber, so that's a plus. I recently buzzed my head so I can shave this down really nice, so I can do, like, the horns and stuff. I actually made them. These are my horns. Now, they still got to be painted a little bit. You know, we'll get them on my head. And they'll, they fit pretty well. I was actually really surprised as to how well I got them to fit. So yeah, lots of horns. Many of horns. Recently got a pair of boots. I love my boots. Knee-high boots that come up really high. Got a bunch of cloth to actually, you know, sew together his outfit. And my favorite part was the pair of contacts. Now I said that in a way because I hate touching my eyes or watching people touch their eyes for that matter. It's been a phobia I have had since I can remember. When my girlfriend takes out her contacts for the night, you know, she's like, mm -hmm. I'm just like, whoa, whoa. oh, it's, it's nasty. Yeah, they forced me to get a pair of contacts. We have to be as legitimate as possible and doing Darth Maul without contacts is just, you know, it's lame. But here they are. I've never worn contacts before in my life, so it's kind of like, Ugh. But does it look like his eyes? Huh? Um, looking through them is, you know, it's kind of fuzzy. My peripheral vision isn't the greatest with them in. But uh, for the most part, uh, it's, it's going to be a really awesome uh, add-on to the costume. So yeah, I'm doing Darth Maul. I'm excited. I can't wait. It's going to be awesome. Most of these builds are going to be for Halloween. But most importantly, we're being showcased at this um, local, you know, Halloween party thing. We're going to be showcased as Obelisk Productions, like a official company thing. So that means our customs have to be spot on, perfect, and amazing. You know, there's no flaws. They have to be like the thing. What I hope this company becomes is a company where we can take on commissions. You know, people come up to us and ask us to build them a sword, an axe, or armor, or like a prop for something, you know, to be off to the side. Eventually, we would love to become an actual movie prop maker. That's our main goal, is to get to that level where big-time movie companies will ask us to build their props. And I I want it so bad. I want it so bad. There's my, there's my latest vlog. I'll see if I can post another one. You know, later down the road. Uh, hopefully I will because of this production studio. I hope it gets me in the habit of producing these videos because I really want to show you guys what's going on. And I want to show you my company or our company. And, and, you know, just seeing my stuff and our work and, you know, having a good time with it. So, I'll see you guys later. And take care. Yeah.